Hey guys, what's up, how's it going? My name is Rob and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be focused on one of the most popular and biggest Vanguard based funds for Canadians called VGRO or VGRO, which is a total market all in one based portfolio that you can buy this one ETF and get exposure to all the broad different markets that there are out there in the world with just the click of one button. So I've talked about these different one, all-in-one portfolios or these all-in-one ETFs on this channel before, but I don't think I've actually reviewed this one. And this is one of the most popular ones. So in today's video, we're going to be diving into this fund. I'm going to be doing a complete walkthrough of the website and showing you guys everything I think that's important. So if you are a beginner and you're just getting started and a lot of this stuff is kind of confusing for you, this video is really going to help you out. So if you guys do enjoy the video, please do me a big solid and smash the like button. If you guys want more Canadian-based content, especially if you're kind of just a beginner and you're kind of getting started with investing and whatnot, be sure to subscribe to the channel. So really quickly, just before we jump inside and we get started with the video, I just want to see really quickly, the main reason why people pick on the one portfolios is for one simple reason, because they're very simple to do. When it comes to investing, there's a lot of different things you can think about. You can get confused about what stocks to buy. You can get confused about, do you want to focus on a growth based portfolio? Do you want a dividend portfolio? You can get confused on the different sectors. You can be confused about, oh, do I invest in US stocks? Do I invest in Canadian stocks? These are all kinds of different things that can get really confusing and you can also get emotionally charged and this can be really frustrating and hard for investors, especially if you're somebody who just wants to kind of invest your money and get on with living your life. So this is where these all-in-one portfolios really shine because they do everything for you and they really do invest in the broader market. So you really don't have to worry about anything. All you have to do is show up day after day or month after month, whatever it is, uh, the time frequency at which you invest your money, click the button, invest your money, and you're pretty much good to go. So these funds aren't for everybody, but they definitely do serve a purpose and they definitely are for people who want to keep things simple. So let's jump inside and let's take a peek at VGRO, VGRO and let's see what this fund is all about. Hey guys, what's up? We're on the VGRO or VGRO or VGRO, however you want to pronounce it, type of um, ETF portfolio. And this, like I mentioned earlier, is really the one, the all-in-one Canadian-based portfolio that a lot of people look for. This is a good um, ETF you can just set and forget kind of type thing. And in today's video and on the next part, this part of the video, I'm going to kind of dive in and give you guys my thoughts about it, give you guys a quick little introductory here. So we're on the Vanguard website. I'll put a link to the Vanguard website. You guys can click in the description of this video to go to the um, ETF and you guys can go and look through it yourself and you can uh, follow along with me as we kind of dive inside this ETF. So the first thing we're going to be taking a peek at is the market price of VGRO. I'm going to refer to it as that from now on throughout this video. The market price is $31 um, Canadian. That's the NAV price. Um, so the, the nice thing about this is it's a relatively cheap ETF. It's not super expensive. It's very affordable. Um, you know, if you're just getting started with investing, put in like 50 bucks um, and away um, into your stock portfolio each month or something like that, you can buy this ETF. The next thing we're going to take a peek at is going to be the management fee. So the management fee of this fund is 0.22%. Because it's a Vanguard based fund, Vanguard based funds always have very cheap management fees, which is why there's some of the best um, management fees uh, that you can grab. I, and I just want to correct myself really quickly. Um, the actually MER, so the MER is the total fee is actually 0.24%. So it's a little bit higher than that. But um, nonetheless, this is a relatively cheap fund and you're paying about 0.24% um, yearly uh, on whatever your, your portfolio total is to hold this fund. Going down here, we have the 12 month yield. So this 12 month yield basically is referring to the distribution yield or the dividend yield. So if you owned, um, let's say $10,000 and this fund, you would get a 1.8% of that in terms of a dividend payment. Um, so it's a relatively low yield. Um, anything under 3%, I would say is kind of on the lower side. But once again, this is a total broad market fund. So it kind of has a little bit of everything, uh, but nonetheless, it's more focused on growth with a little bit of dividend in there. So um, not a super, big dividend fund, uh, mostly focused on stock appreciation and stock growth, as we can see. Um, and if we take a peek at the graph here, we can actually see over the last while how much this fund has actually grown. So uh, we could go here and look at the past month return. We could go over the past three months return, six months, year to date, and et cetera, et cetera. And you guys can take a peek um, on that to see how the fund has grown. Now, one thing I like to always mention is when you're assessing a fund, you always want to look at a fund that's growing over time. You never want to see a fund that's kind of flatlined or trading uh, sideways kind of thing. And we can see with this fund over the past five years, um, since the beginning of 2018, this fund was trading at $25 a share and going to today's current date, which is February 8, 18th of 2022, um, it's currently trading at 31%, so quite a bit of growth there. And if we go since inception, we can once again see when the fund first started, which was 
once again in January 2018. So this fund isn't a super old fund, but we can see that it is good growth. And we will be looking at the um, holdings later on throughout this video so we can also see um, basically how, they, how this fund is choosing to invest your cash. Um, and the distribution frequency, in case you guys didn't know, is quarterly. So that basically is referring to the fact that every three months or so, um, you will get a nice good chunk of the dividend payment. So most funds, some funds will pay monthly, some pay, pay quarterly. The quarterly, quarterly ones tend to kind of take those three months, wrap them up into one, so you get a nice good chunky dividend every three months. Now, if we go and take a peek at the fund highlights, we can get, and get some more information about this fund. And it's always important to check the objectives and to make sure that the funds align with your objectives as an individual investor. So this fund seeks to achieve its investment objective by primarily investing in equity and fixed income securities. So this is referring to equity as in stocks. Um, so this would be growth based stocks and fixed income refer to, you know, dividend payments and whatnot. Um, it may do so either directly or indirectly through investment in one or more exchange traded funds managed by the manager or an affiliate or certain other investment funds. So this means that it's doing this through multiple different ETFs or different funds inside this portfolio. And you'll see that this fund basically wraps a bunch of different ETFs together. It really is that um, overall market. So you buy this fund, you get a little bit of exposure to everything and it kind of gives you that exposure throughout different ETFs. And in, in seeking to achieve the investment objective under normal market, market conditions, the sub-advisor will strive to maintain a long-term strategic asset allocation of equity, approximately 80%, and fixed income, approximately 20%. So this means that it could be bonds, it could be, and it probably is referring to bonds, and we'll take a peek once we get to the portfolio holdings, uh, but fixed income could be, it could be bonds, anything that pays out a steady um, distribution. And uh, it could be dividend income, it could be bonds, it could be, you know, if you're looking at a bank, it could be like a savings account or a GIC. That's kind of what fixed income is referring to. And the portfolio asset mix may be recon reconstituted and rebalanced from time to time at the discretion of the sub-advisor. So this basically means they can change things, they can rebalance things, they and they will do this over time as things kind of change throughout the markets and whatnot. And the underlying funds are expected to be, to be index funds that are provide that provide exposure to broad-based equity and fixed income markets. So once again, you're getting that overall market um, kind of investment portfolio if you choose to invest into this fund. And you'll see that's exactly what you're going to get. So if we scroll a little bit further down, we're going to look at the part that everybody wants to see. And the thing that's probably the most important thing is what is the performance of this fund over time? So we're going to assess this really quickly. One thing I like to do is I don't really like to look at charts. I like to actually get the actual numbers. For me, I find these charts can be a little bit confusing. So if you go to uh, cumulative, uh, which basically um, is adding everything up over time, we can see the breakdown by breakdown over time, the actual return of this fund. So we can see that over the past month, the fund is down at negative 3%. Over the past year, it's down negative 3%. Over the past year, it's up uh, uh, basically a year. Uh, so February of 2021 to February of 2022, it's up 11%. And over the past three years, the fund is up 38%. So pretty good growth. This inception basically just tells us since the day that the fund was started to the day of today's current date, this is how much the fund has grown in total. So you want to see everything added up together, you would expect a 37% overall. And you can go annually here. So you can see that each individual year, which will give you an accurate representation of what you're actually getting on a year by year. So basically, we can see the capital return, which would be the stock appreciation, we can see the income return, which would be probably the dividends, the bonds or anything like that. And then we can see the total return. So if we add up the dividends, the bonds, the stock appreciation, this will give us the total return here by the nav um, and we can see here that in 20, 2019 we had a total return of 17 percent 2020 we had a total return of 11 percent or so and then in 2021 we had a total return of 15 percent so pretty good years over the past three three years that we've had this fund we're looking at an average return of i don't know maybe like 10 11 12 percent which has been pretty solid and pretty good for an overall market etf and the graph down here just basically is going to show us that if you invested $10,000 at the beginning of January, January 2018 when the fund first started, that $10,000 would now be worth about $14,000 or $13,000 uh, today. So that's about three years or so. Now, once again, keep in mind this isn't including regular deposits. So if you put like $100 bucks or $500 bucks or $1,000 every single month, that would be a lot more. But if you just put $10,000, you had to sit in this fund, it would grow to be uh, you know, that roughly 30% or 40%, whatever it was that it gained um, since the fund first started. So once again, pretty good return. Um, like the return, it's a pretty good uh, result. And I'd pretty, be pretty happy with that if you're looking at a, uh, a portfolio that's going to get you a nice good capital gains with some nice good uh, dividends. 
And if you dive deeper into the portfolio allocation, we can actually see, like I mentioned earlier, we have that 80% stock. So 80% of the fund is in stocks and 20% is in bonds. So it looks like the fixed income is coming from bonds. And then there's some short-term reserves, which is 0.01% pretty much non-existent. So once again, this is a growth-based portfolio. So when assessing a ETF or a fund that has a lot of stocks, so like 80% stocks, we're really playing the big picture, the long-term picture here. So we're not looking at making some positive return or getting some gains really quickly over like a couple months or a year. We're really looking for that long-term gains. Now, the cool thing is this fund has returned quite well. And if you invest at the right time and if you keep putting money in, you know, even a fund like this can get you a good result. And we, we've seen that over the past three years, if you would have invested in this fund, you'd be sitting at a pretty nice gain. So once again, you don't always have to think that, you know, there's more risk with stocks. Just understand that your portfolio will tend to go up and down a little bit more, but you do capitalize when the markets go up, as you've seen with this, uh, the growth of this fund over time. Going further down on this page, we can take a peek at some of the meat inside the portfolio. So we can look at the number of stocks. And as you guys are gonna see here, this is the reason why this really is one of those uh, ETFs that you just buy the ETF and you, you could have it as a single ETF inside your portfolio because there's 13,000 stocks inside this ETF. So that's a lot of stocks. That's a lot of diversification. And the market cap of all these stocks is $109 billion. So that's a lot of cash spread across a lot of different companies. And going down here, we can also see the bonds. So we can see the number of bonds, which is 17,000 bonds. Once again, tons of bonds. Um, and that's pretty solid. And you can see the average duration and the average maturity and whatnot. So if you want to guys want to take a peek at that, that's something you can do as well. And here's the underlying assets uh, in regards to the funds that um, this, this portfolio basically invests into. Here's the different ETFs or the different Vanguard ETFs that are actually inside of this portfolio. So once again, unfortunately, they didn't include the tickers here, which is a little bit annoying, but you guys can just copy these names and you could paste them into Google and you guys can see the different funds here. So this would be VUN for the US total market. So I wish they would have included the tickers, but you guys can just copy the names, punch them into Google and it'll pop in as the Vanguard fund. So the number one fund we have is US markets, which is what I like to see. The US, I think most portfolios, if you want to get a good gain, especially if investing in equities, I think you need to hold a lot of US stocks or at least a good chunk. So I do like to see that. The second one is Canada, is a FTSE Canada All Cap Index ETF. And this is going to be the second largest holding. And because we are Canadian investors and this is a Canadian based ETF, it makes sense to hold a lot of stocks in, in your native country because you get, you know, um, you get the currency exposure, you get tax benefits and other things like that. And the Canadian stocks, if you invest in the right ones, actually have performed quite well and are not bad stocks. Um, the FTSE developed all cap um, North American ETF, which I guess focuses on a mixture of Canadian and US stocks. I'm not too sure what that one is. Uh, we have a Canadian uh, bond index. So we're getting exposure to some Canadian bonds at 11 or 12% here. And then we have emerging markets, which is 5%. So a little bit of emerging markets. I do like this exposure because I think it is beneficial to invest in emerging markets, but they haven't done well recently. So I don't, I wouldn't want to hold too much of my portfolio in emerging markets, but it is nice to see that little bit of exposure, you know, for when they do do well. And we can see once again, some global uh, bonds here. Once, once again, is it looks like, looks like there are some Canadian hedged bonds at the bottom here, which help, I guess, add some stability, kind of add some more balance to your portfolio, get you a little bit of fixed income. And, you know, and if your equities go, if you have a bad year in equities, I guess these bonds, the whole purpose is to help balance out the portfolio. So if you're looking for a portfolio that can help uh, maybe offset some of that temporary loss, um, you know, these bonds can definitely be um, something you can look into. And we also have the market capitalization. So um, you can see the different um, size of the companies, I guess, inside your portfolio is how you refer to this. So large caps is 81% of this fund. Once again, I'm a big fan of large cap companies. You know, it is important to hold a little bit of everything, uh, but you know, you want to invest in the good quality companies and that's what these funds are doing. So large cap at 81%, then we have some medium, large, medium and small. So nice little exposure, but once again, mostly just good quality companies going in here. And then here's some other countries that you can look um, if you want to see more of a breakdown of the different regions. So we have the Amer uh, United States of America, US, 42% of the fund, uh, Canada, 30%. So once again, 70% of the portfolio is in North America, which is Canada and US. And I think this is pretty sound. If you're a Canadian investor and you're looking for a good growth-based portfolio, that's a pretty good way to do it. Like 70%, you know, you could adjust it to be whatever you want, but I do like that. And then we have some other different countries here. So Japan would probably be the emerging markets. And then we have United Kingdom, China, and some other ones here. So nice little, nice little exposure to some of these other um, different um, nationalities in different countries. And going downwards, we have the sectors. 
So we can take a peek at the sectors. Now with a fund that's diversified, you're gonna see um, a bunch of different sectors and we wanna see a nice diversified fund, you know? And we don't wanna see like too much tech, too much technology, um, too many financials, too much healthcare, too much energy. You wanna see a little bit of balance of everything. Although keep in mind, depending on what countries you're investing into, you're gonna see a little bit of um, um, an increase depending on what it is. So the financials, obviously, if you're investing in Canadian stocks, you're probably going to have a good chunk of your stocks and finances. And that's going to be, you know, the insurance companies, the banks. Um, those are some of the best stocks we have. So that makes sense. Most of the financials is probably coming from Can the Canadian stocks with a little bit of maybe U.S. stocks. And then we have tech here. Probably most of the tech is coming from the U.S. US stocks. And then we have ind industrials and consumer stocks, which once again are probably coming from the U.S. And then we have some other ones here, which is a little bit of everything. So we have a little bit of even a little bit of real estate exposure inside this fund. So you're really getting a little bit of everything, but you're not getting too much on one or the other. The top three is tech, industrials, and consumer consumer stocks, but it's not nothing too crazy. We don't see anything like 60% tech or 70% financials. It's a nice broad based exposure to a little bit of everything. And finally, we're gonna actually gonna get inside the holdings of this fund. So once again, we have some pretty good companies for holdings. Um, you guys can take a peek and see on the equity tab, we can look at the actual stock. So equity, once again, if you guys don't know, just stands for stocks. Um, Apple is gonna be the number one biggest holding. And this makes sense. You know, this is gonna be some of those bigger US-based companies. So we have Apple, Microsoft, but then we have some of the Canadian banks, like I mentioned before, which makes sense from some of those Canadian-based ETFs. We have RBC and TD, two of my favorite banks actually. So that's really nice to see. We have Shopify, which exposes some of that tech, Amazon, uh, BNS, Enbridge, and then some Brookfield Asset Management and Bank of Montreal. So this really is a nice diversified ETF that really focuses on Canadian, some of the big Canadian banks and some of the better Canadian finance-based companies with also some of those techie and other different uh, types of stocks that the U.S. accounts will hold. And then you're also getting that, you know, that um, emerging markets uh, to some of those other foreign country exposures as well. Now, looking at the distribution history, we can take, take a peek at some of the important things to keep in mind here and some things to just kind of watch out for. So once again, we know that the distribu distribution frequency is quarterly. So every like three months or so, you're going to get a payment. The 12-month trailing dividend yield is 1.88% and the distribution yield is 2.29% as of January 31st. So it's not quite updated. I guess it's like two weeks behind. They probably updated on a monthly basis or something like that. And we can see the different types of income here. So income is going to be the number one thing. And then they also have some income from capital gains, which is going to be paid out as well. And you guys can see the ex-dividend date, the record date, the payment date. So the payment date is going to be when you're actually going to get the dividend. Um, cash distribution per unit. So this means how much you're getting per share. So if you owned one share of this fund, you would get 18 cents. If you want to figure out how much it's going to be, take the number of shares you have and multiply it by the cash distribution per unit or or the actual thing you kind of probably want to do is look at the total distribution per unit to see the total amount because we also have some reinvestment distribution per unit as well and it looks like they're reinvesting the capital gains back into the portfolio so it's just it's just good to know i'm like I'm glad they actually put this on here because some funds don't actually show that and if you go to the actual distributions we can see the different types of distribution so if you want to be like super tax efficient or if you want to really get technical with this kind of stuff you can look at the eligible dividends and eligible div dividends is referring to canadian based companies so we get tax benefits um for as canadians if we hold eligible dividends outside of our tfsa and whatnot so that's something to take uh to kind of keep in mind we have non-eligible dividends here other income so that would be other types of income capital gains here return of capital foreign income um, and then foreign income tax. So you will be paying some foreign, foreign income tax if you hold this fund inside of a TFSA. Um, I don't think you would pay much inside of an RSV because I don't think you'd pay much inside, of, but it just depends. You know, it gets kind of technical when you look at the different accounts and whatnot, uh, but just keep in mind that you will pay some income tax, uh, but not a lot. Uh, mostly it would just go towards some of those US stocks, uh, but you know, a good chunk of the portfolio is pretty tax efficient. And once again, depending on, you know, if it's in a personal account, a TFSA, or an RSP, it's gonna be a little bit different. All right guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section if you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any thoughts about this fund, please sure to let us know. And also if you guys hold the fund, uh, let us know why in the comments you actually hold this fund and why do you like it? Uh, I think it'd be kind of cool to hear your guys' thoughts on that. So once again, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to give it, uh, give the video a big like and subscribe to the channel. Take care, have yourself a good weekend, um, and I'll see you guys later.